Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's get back to this guy here. All right. On tonight's show, we talk TV, we talk movies, we have a couple of good uh, movie reviews. Well, we have movie reviews, so they're not good movie reviews. And we also take your comments and subjection, subje blah, blah, blah. yes, your stuff over Twitter. Uh, this is PTR Radio. Here are your hosts. Your hosts for this evening, Shaggy. Who the f*** are you? You nothing, you nothing, you are nothing, and you will never be anything. Never. Colin. Anybody know who you are? You miserable, presumptuous, no talent. You obviously don't have the talent. And Mike, the ape man. You are everything that's gone wrong in this world. You are self-consumed, no talent, mediocre piece of shit. PTR Radio. Welcome, everybody, to PTR Radio here on the fabulous Intar Web. We are trying everything to bring you a show this evening. <laughs> and we'll see how well it works. Uh, so Mike checking in from our New Jersey satellite office studio. How's it going? Uh, sure. I have a feeling by the end of the night, I am going to have a migraine or something. <laughs> Possibly an aneurysm. I don't know. Well, uh, to let you know, you sound just fine now. Well, you guys, you guys, it seems to be like come and go. So I don't know. I just closed everything possible on my end. Yep. Hopefully that. I, well, we'll see. Yeah, that's all we can really do is we can see. Uh, so anyway, this evening, folks, we are going to be a little bit heavy on the TV and movies because there's just a lot of stuff to talk about regarding TVs and movies. And honestly, that's one of our favorite subjects, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think we could do every show, TV and movies, but that would get boring for everyone else. Better than politics. Uh, well, it's not more entertaining, though. It's a, in fact, I'm going to talk about one thing right away that we didn't put on the show plan, because I want to get you guys' guess about what it is. Kathy Griffin. No, not Kathy Griffin. It's, uh, it, I'll tell you right now, I will give... I will give you an audio clue um, and see if you guys possibly, possibly heard about this. Um, did you guys hear something having to do with, not necessarily the song, but the subject of the song? Do you guys have any idea what that could possibly have to do with politics? No. All right. Um, I'm going to guess the way the Ukrainian ambassador princess woman in the red dress was staring at Trump and now is a huge meme. Uh, no, actually, you're, you're completely off on that one. Okay. It actually has to do with the fact that in the residency portion of the White House the other night, there were two mysterious strobing red lights. And so, and so the Internet was abuzz with theories on what they could be. Do you guys want to take any guesses on what some of the theories were? Strobing red lights. Strobing red lights coming from two rooms within the White House. Uh, smoke detectors whose batteries need to be replaced? Uh, that would be sirens, usually. Huh? That that would traditionally be, you know. No, I know. But hold on, I'm gonna mute for a second. Hopefully, I don't hang up. Okay. I'm just listen. I'm I'm trying to listen to the stream to make sure that we at least sound good on the stream. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Um. So, uh, well, I, somebody thought, for example, that maybe it was Melina Trump signaling that she needed help. That she was being held against her will, and that she needed some policemen to assist her. 
All right. Uh, someone else thought that maybe uh, it was an alarm every time Trump picked up his phone to tweet. That it would go off. Yeah, I can see that. All right. Uh, yet another. So, Mike, any uh, any ideas what those red lights could be? What do you think they were? Um, Himalayan salt lamps with strobe bulbs to increase the ionification properties. Uh, okay, it could have been. Could have been. Some people thought that it was a a uh, a, a a suntan bulb gone awry. Uh, you know, someone thought that it was the orb that they showed the picture of the three leaders around, and that Trump was trying to contact the alien homeworld. No, because if he was, if he needed to contact the alien homeworld, he would just, you know, pick up the phone to Oprah. Um, or maybe 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 it was the the hotline like the bat phone to Putin. Someone Putin else was trying to call him, and Trump was like, someone, "I can't talk to you anymore. Melania is looking for attention. She wants me to touch her vagina." Somebody thought that it was Morse code to the Russians, saying, "You know, Fox is in the hen house. All is well." You know, there were there were a lot of different ideas, but it was it was gripping the country. See, right here, you can actually see. Oh wow, that's um, that's, that's uh... you can actually see the red lights in the windows of the White House. That's more than I expected. That looks photoshopped. No, nope, this is actually not photoshopped. Laser tag. <laughs> yes, it's laser tag. Uh, Trump's nightlight. Someone thought that it was proof that aliens do live among us and that they were conferring with the president. Um, he was you know, previewing the sign for sponsorship naming rights of the White House. Uh, there, was, there was a whole lot of, of different ones out there. They, they are keeping Trump entertained. He was chasing a laser pointer around. <laughs> oh. I wish I had thought of that one. <laughs> uh, but I yeah. Were... At eleven, at eleven thirteen last night, Skynet became active. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there were there were just a lot of them. Uh, somebody likened it to an ex episode of Sk Seinfeld. Thought maybe it was a Kenny Rogers roaster sign that they were getting installed. Um, let's see here. S someone else thought maybe Trump had a heart attack, and the emergency vehicles are secretly trying to remove him. Wishful thinking. Uh, someone else said it's the overheat warning light on Jared's shredder. Um, I, I said this one before. They fixed it so when Trump starts to tweet, lights warn the staff. Trump was gone so long he thought it was Christmas. <laughs> uh, see, I don't know, Mike, if you saw the one. If you saw the picture of the orb, but here's the picture of the orb I was discussing. Yes, I saw the pic picture of the orb, and you know, luckily Trump's hands are so small that everybody else, everybody else had room to fit on there. You know. Yeah. Uh, Trump's sunbed is trying to disintegrate him. Oh, this one, this one was a great one. They they thought maybe it was a uh, neuralizer from Men in Black, and they were trying to prep the staff for what tomorrow's lies might be. Oh Lord. So, uh, oh, good. The, the aliens have come for the administration, saving all of mankind. You know, what they revealed it really was was a reflection of a passing ambulance <laughs> <laughs> on the White House windows. And nobody thought that the lights were on the outside. Yeah, but it was, but it was still great to watch. And I, I liked seeing all the tweets come in. That, that was, that was talent, right there. Okay, now you had the perfect segue into my personal little debacle. Okay. Last weekend. So I, I was uh, smoking uh, two pork butts and a pork loin roast. Okay. What, what, what kind of wrapping paper do you use to smoke that? Uh, zigzags. It's the only kind to use. Okay. So they're in my new smoker. 
And so I was smoking them, and uh, um, I went out and swapped out the wood chips a couple of times. So I thought you had the puck thing. Yeah. No, this is my new smoker. So you went away from pucks? Yes. And you went to chip back to chips? I went to chips for the first time. All right, but I was all set to buy a puck one. You because know, so you, had me, you had me sold on pucks. No, you don't want a puck one anymore. What? Here, okay. I am so confused, Mike. No. How about you? I want, I want a pellet one. Pellets are good, too. But, but here's the thing. I wanted electric in the beginning because I don't want to deal with you get a uh, a wood one or a gas one or something. Like they gotta deal with you know, oh, it's too hot, so I gotta open vents and turn the you know the gas down. Oh, now it's cold. You're playing around with all that stuff. I got a master built thermo tip. It's like the first propane smoker with a thermostat built in. So you set it for the temperature you want, and it keeps the temperature you want. Okay. So anyway, I was using this new smoker. Mm-hmm. Now, I had neglected to buy a new uh, metal thing to put wood chips into. So pie I'd, pan. That would have been a good plan. I use pie pans. Uh, what was not a good plan was a broken plastic trash can. Like a, a little bit, mini one. No. That, that was a bad idea. So, no, so I was sitting, we were sitting downstairs watching, um, I think it was person has Got a Talent. And um, so, yeah, suddenly I see... Giant flames reflecting off a window. Um, yeah, the um, the trash can had caught on fire, and it had lit uh, a couple coolers that were nearby on fire. Oh, my God. And, um, yeah, big fire. Big, big, scary fire. Um, so, uh, so here's the stupid, well, that's the stupidest thing I did. Here's the other stupid thing I did. I went out there onto the porch with the huge fire next to the smoke, propane smoker, and I put on my barbecue gloves, and I reached in, and I turned the propane tank off, and then ran away. <laughs> so uh, I, I called 911, and my father um, actually went outside and got the hose. Um, so... Yeah, that was fun. So a uh, new smoker has uh, now been destroyed and replaced. I have a, another new smoker coming. Uh, insurance people, yeah, it was It was fun. Not. It was not fun at all. But uh, luckily we managed, because I saw, because we were not stupid. Any stupider than we are, I already was there. But <laughs> if we didn't, like, leave the house or go upstairs or anything like that, I was sitting literally, you know, 15 feet away from the smoker so that when the giant flame of death started, um, that I was able to see it in a reflection, admittedly, yeah, and uh, get it turned off. But uh, um, actually, there, there, there's a picture. We'll, we'll find it later and post it up so people can see the, uh, the aftermath. Oh, yeah. I always love seeing fails. Um, so yeah, that was my thing. Yeah, I almost burned down my parents' house. Uh, literally, we were minutes away from the fire getting to the house itself and taking out the house. It was, it was nasty. Luckily, all the plastic was away from the house, not towards the house. Yeah. But now, see, we, I don't have that kind of excitement. For a story, um, Friday was Kim and my five-year wedding anniversary. So, in celebration, I took her to uh, this local garden center to buy plants and stuff to landscape our yard with. And we filled up the back of the the truck with with plants and grass and palms and other stuff. And then we spent most of the weekend. Okay, so Friday night we went out to dinner. And decided to stop off at a bar on the way home. Got home, text my neighbor, said, "Hey, I got, I got Lucky Buddha beer. You want to try one?" Okay, so we went out, drank beer with him, came inside, went to bed. Woke up the next day, started planting. Went out Saturday night to a friend's house for a gigantic feast that we were not expecting, but was wonderful. Drank some more, came home, went to bed. Sunday. 
went out to dinner with friends and realized we can't party like we used to because <laughs> a couple of drinks is not a good – a couple of drinks is all we had. That was it. Yeah. And then yes, yesterday we were just completely socked, like looking at each other like we both – we know there's so much to do, but we're not doing anything. And I said, no, we're not. Hmm. So no fire, no burning the house down, nothing. The Maybe the most thinking I did all weekend was trying to figure out how to build a little log cabin for the squirrels in the backyard. Yeah. Until Shaggy is intently troubleshooting because no, he I got no react Either that or you guys really think that I am just – no. Out there that I'm talking about building a log cabin for my squirrels. No, I, I completely agree because you saw yeah. my posts about the birds, you know, the baby birds in the uh, in the planter and everything. So, I mean, you know, that is my – hell, I've named the birds, you know, uh, even though they look exactly the same. Uh, you know, I've named the birds that return every year. And I know how many hatchlings were – you know, we're now on our second birthing of the season. So, you know, no, no, I'm very – I'm super protective of my birds. But only the ones in the front, on the front porch. I could care less about the garbage birds in the backyard. All right. But the birds on my front porch, I, uh, I'll cut somebody if they mess with my birds in the front. Okay. <laughs> As I said on the last show, they will probably still be coming and, and having you know, babies on my front porch once my daughter moves away. They are going to be the only constant in my life is those birds. All Fair right. enough. I like most birds. I hate geese. Oh, geese are just asses. Yeah, that's all there is to it. That that's uh, that's it. Where I work, we are. It, there's geese everywhere, and terrible, terrible, terrible creatures. Yeah, no, I was. Uh, Colin just actually sent me the picture of his attempt to burn down his parents' home, and might I say, um, pretty good arsonist you would make. You know, I, I, I was not kidding. It was. It, the, the the trash can that originally started the fire no longer exists. But I mean, if you're going to do it for the insurance money, you have to be a little bit more clever about it. Yeah, we we uh, uh, there are some boards there that need to be replaced, <laughs> um, but uh, that's about the extent of it. So uh, so yeah, I which I am I'm going to post on our Facebook page so that you can people will be able to see it. And I'll put it on our Instagram, too, for those Can people. we pop it up? To... Uh, yeah, I, we should be able to. Sure. Why not? Why, why don't we make that mistake? Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh... I haven't hated myself yet today. There we yeah. go. So that's, that's a rug that got melted, it, burned? It's an outdoor plastic rug. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, next time... Um, put the accelerant next to the propane tank, all right, because that's really going to give you more bang for your buck, okay? Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know. L- luckily, the accelerant was the opposite side from the propane tank. But <laughs> when, when it was all d- said and done, and you can't really see it in the picture, the propane tank's hose was melting. Yeah. So you, really, you know, A for effort, Yeah. but just a C for execution. Yeah, well, I, I shouldn't have turned off the propane tank. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, try harder. Try harder. Uh, you see, you see those... And you're saying this is better than electric and a puck, huh? Because it sure it... seems like a bad idea. No, this is do not put uh, smoldering hot wood into a small broken plastic trash can. That's all this is saying. Mm-hmm. You, know, you see all that the, the stuff that's, okay, so you can see the grates on the ground, right? Yeah. So you can see that stuff to the left of that? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the um, the remains of a wheel from the um, cooler. Yeah, I think maybe you're the reason why we have warning labels on things. Uh, so, so, like on curling irons, it says not for internal use. So the best part, no, not the best part. I mean, the fun part of this is that there actually was a problem with that smoker. And I was communicating with Master Belt about getting it fixed. They were going to take, uh, they were going to have me ship back the top section of the smoker so they could figure out what it was. So it's a very minor thing. Um, so, so I wrote them back and I said, well, yes, like I said in my previous email, I do still have the box I can send it back to you in. However, 
uh, due to my rampant stupidity, <laughs> the smoker itself is uh, now destroyed. Uh, um, I can still send you the top of the smoker if your quality control still wants to look, take a look at it. Yeah, but. let me see here. Um, uh, trash. They, so Master Built, uh, and the, the, the big props for them, they said, no, we don't need it. But if you do buy a new Master Built to replace it with, send us the receipt and we'll send you free stuff. Yeah, um, let's see here. Uh, there is, uh, there's no screenshots for that, but there are, you know, there are a ton. I bought that one right there. This one? Yep, that one it has already been delivered. All right, yeah, so you bought this 10-gallon, uh, here, we'll flip back here. Uh, so you bought this metal bucket. Yes. Uh, which, it, by the way, they sell at Walmart. You didn't have to order it online. It cost two. It cost fifteen dollars from Walmart. Yeah. It cost ten dollars from Amazon, and was delivered free on Sunday. <laughs> to which yeah. my dad said, "Look at the giant box," and he said, "Well, no one made any money off of that." <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking here. All right, Colin, we're going to do a little bit of a lesson here. All right, this one right here, no hot ashes in. <laughs> no hot ashes. No. No hot ashes in this one, or this fact, one. That, or that first one. one, that first plastic one there, that one, um, that looks a lot like my garbage can. And I believe right on the top, it's imprinted on the lid, no hot ashes. Yes, I, I was actually looking for it because mine is the same. It's a dark blue, and it says no hot ashes. So, so here's what's awful. There is, a, there is a real trash can on the porch as well. I thought I was being safer by not putting it in the giant real trash can, which is still yeah. plastic, but putting it into the small one. Yeah. No. The small one, which I actually already used twice before. Yeah, I was looking for the ones that actually said no hot ashes. Oh, you know, but they don't, I, evidently they don't, see, because mine's like this one, this blue one here, and it says no hot ashes right on top. No, the one that I put it in, it's one of those small ones that you could put next to a toilet. Yeah. And, but it, but someone had stepped on it. <laughs> so it was half shattered. No, it had, it, had, it had no place uh, having uh, hot wood put into it. Yeah, no. No, I, 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 freely, I freely admit it was a bad idea. And yeah. the fireman was very nice about it. Yeah. They're usually pretty nice because they think that you're, you know, special. <laughs> <laughs> now, the best part was they're like, okay, here's the phone number that you need to call tomorrow to get the uh, report form. For so your you insurance give, company? So you give it to the insurance company. Great. So we call up the city, and the city's like, oh, yeah, you need to put in a uh, Freedom of Information Act request a, to get that. A FOIA. So you have to put in a FOIA. And then you have to say, oh, so we give that to you, the fire department? No, no, you give it to the city clerk. Yeah. And we're like, oh, okay. I want to stop the story there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> no, I... Uh, well, I think if you were following us on Instagram, you actually saw what I did some of this weekend, which was recycle. All right. And I did a lot of recycling. Uh, Mike, you, I think you saw the back of my truck. Electronics recycling. Yes, I did. All right. Um, basically, some third world country is going to get an upgrade for their defense system, defense department, uh, just from my office. Because there so were nine computers. So what you're saying is in a couple of months, North Korea will finally be able to make that rocket launch. Could, could be. Or recycled hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, I mean, some of it was actually usable, but I was just, because I'm one of these people that go, oh, I don't want to throw that away. I could use it. You know, there were a couple of like second or third gen Core 2 duos in there. I have a goddamn computer case sitting over here from... A year ago, yeah, that I ordered. I forget what I was going to do. I think I was going to move, transplant all of Kim's stuff into this case, or I was going to, or something. Nothing. The plastic's still on the front, and I refuse to get. I refuse to do anything with it because I keep saying to myself, "I'm going to build my next computer in this case." This is a nice case. Yeah, I threw away one that was just a, a shell. You know, there was nothing in it. I threw one away where I had lost the side panels to the case. Now, why the hell was I holding on to that? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Because if you build a massively performance machine, you need that airflow. You need 
a box fan on one side with a box fan on the other to just create a wind tunnel. Yeah. For cool. Yeah. Um, and I and uh, a, a inkjet printer was included in there as well because don't need that anymore. Right yep. now there are three laser printers in this room. I like laser printers. <laughs> I, I, Jeremy, I like laser printers because I generally only need one of them. <laughs> Because they just keep working. Yes. Although I can see that most of yours are HPs. Uh, no. Nope. There's a that brother. HP. Oh, oh, There's yeah. an HP, and there's a Dell. Oh. I thought the, I thought the brother was the HP. The nope. brother, I've had good luck with. Brother. Oh, the brother has. I've had the brother for like ten years. Yeah. I just recently replaced it with the Dell because the Dell I got super cheap, and it's a color. So, therefore, I don't need the color printer, which I haven't had hooked up in, like, four years. Yeah. Um, you know? So... You see, we, we have two. Kim has a, a, a black and white brother that we got cheap just to print, you know, everyday stuff or invoices and all of that. But then we have the color brother to print out our brochures and business stuff. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, there's definitely a reason for it. I just... Then she also has her little Dymo label laser printer to print shipping labels on. Mm-hmm. And this comes out faster than your receipt at Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, those things are nice. Um, so She's got toys that I'm not allowed to play with, and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Of course she does. Of course she does. So, so two things I forgot to put the links up for. Yep. Um, the goes for computers. So, there. Uh, so about a week, so several years ago, 2012. Um, There's a company who bought the Commodore brand. Uh huh. And they came out with a brand new Commodore Amiga. Right. Which was I remember actually, that. It wasn't it just a keyboard that you then plugged the monitor and everything into. Well, this is just a regular computer. Okay. Yeah. It just was a regular PC that they stuck the name Amiga on. However, a week ago. Somebody came out with an actual brand new Amiga. It's called the Aeon Amiga X5000. For people who really, really, really can't release their grip on their personal favorite platform winning. Okay. Like, because, you know, because, uh, um, Everybody who was born after all of us were. At one point, there was the Windows PC, the Mac, and the Amiga. Those were the three home computers with graphical interfaces. Uh, the Amiga was actually a better uh, GUI than Windows was. But they had a CEO who was more interested in using all the money for partying than R&D, and he basically destroyed the company. But now it's back. So I think it's like several thousand dollars. You can have a, a brand new 2017 computer with a 35-year-old operating system. Whee! That, no, I don't even know how to respond to that. I, I truly don't. It, it's ridiculous. I don't know where they got the money. Because they certainly didn't do a Kickstarter. Oops. Hold on. Ah! I just screwed Mike up. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, at least we can still hear him. Yeah, I know. But that doesn't, that doesn't help. Ah, uh, there he is. All right. By, by the way. Yes. Side note here, but... Are, are, are you by chance like running Chrome? Yes. And Chrome was open before we opened the call. Uh, no. Okay. Why? Because apparently, from what I was reading on troubleshooting, Chrome and 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 Slack don't get along too well. Ah, that's weird. I'll, I'll have. I don't to understand that, but yeah, I don't either. I yeah, don't because the, the Chrome desktop is actually running in Node, which is running on top of 
Chrome, or at least Chrome's JavaScript engine. So. Yeah, that's very odd. But dude, dude, what did you? What did you? What I do? Fix what? the fix the thing, man. Oh, sorry. I'm seeing all Instagram stuff. <laughs> well, I was I there. There you go. It's all gone now. Okay. Well, I was trying to. I, I'm yeah. like, hey, in case anybody ever wants to mess, you know, notice us on Instagram or whatever. We during the show, I doubt it, but whatever. Uh, all right. So, um, okay, let's let me, get to what we were talking about. Yeah. What we were supposed to talk about tonight. Yeah. The, the long list of the links. Long that we list actually of have. stuff that we actually do have for tonight. So, um, all right, now, to, I am picking the first topic from this list. All right, go. Because I threatened to boycott if we didn't talk about this. All right, let's talk about the Orville. You're right. No, we'll talk about what you want to talk about. <laughs> we can talk about the Orville first. No, we can talk about what you want to first. All right, so anybody who watched wrestling in the late 80s, early 90s, knows that Channel 11 in here, or in, in our area anyway, there used to be a show called Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. And it was basically like a parody female wrestling association. Well, Netflix is apparently doing a kind of history origins of GLOW. And when I saw this, I was excited for today because House of Cards came back. I was very impressed that, you know, Kevin Spacey, Went with gray hair, and I'm about halfway through, and it scares me how much they are really relating this to real life now. But I was excited for it to come back. I am more excited for this. I am almost as excited for this as I was for Pacific Rim. Which, if you want, we have a clip. Please go ahead. Let's 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 have, play this here. We have a clip. So here we go. This is. This is Glow, the part of the official trailer. Slurs. Go! Yes. Woo. Christ. Ah. Fucking actresses. Okay, I want you to meet the star of Glow, Debbie Egan. Are you insane? Why is she here? She's the alpha and you're the omega. Submit. She might kill you. This is Sebastian Howard, our producer. This is my first Hollywood party. There are drugs in the fucking robot. Thank you. Wrestling is about type. You're a sexy party girl. You're an Arab. You mean stereotype. Yes, bingo, exactly. You're a big black girl. The fuck you say? Oh. Lady wrestlers. I get it. Women can do anything men do. Blah, blah, blah. How'd that look? I got chills. Yeah, you would. So you think I got a funny We're empowered. We're the heroes. You want the show to happen. So that's Glow in a nutshell. So, Mike, you're excited. I'm excited. And then when I realized that Mark Marin actually, it's a real porn mustache that he grew for this. Yeah. I think when, when Mark Marin commits to a role like that, you know it's got to be good. Well, I mean, Marin's got a lot of things up in the air, and it's and it, it is nice to see him involved again in things, uh, you know, especially taking on a series. You know, I think Netflix has got a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah, uh, that's going to be pretty good. Something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not in the U.S. or Canada, Netflix has Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, Th that thing that I don't think is going to go over well. I, I, I have a problem with that, to tell you the truth. Star Trek Discovery is supposed to be, isn't it supposed to be, it's supposed to be 10 years before Kirk. Yes. All right. According to what we've read, it is 10 years before Kirk. All right. Um, See, even the dog agrees with me. Um, she's she's pissed at Star Trek Discovery. Now, um, 
have you looked at the trailer for this? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, so you guys have seen... Let's see here. Let's see if I can get to a good place here. All right, so let me bring up the trailer here for us so that we can see... You guys can see what my problem is, all right? Sorry. You're, you said in your thing that you're going to respect canon and you're not going to go in the alternate timeline. Yeah. All right. So you're supposed to be respecting the, the difference here between Enterprise, the, the TV series, and the original series. All right. So if you, if, you, if you were a fan of Star Trek and you watched Enterprise, which I know not everybody did, all yeah. right, but if you watch Enterprise, they pay deep respect to that they were before the original series. Yes, but they still had a lot of look. They had more like later series. Well, I don't think it was nearly as spit poli- it was spit and polish and, and everything. Because if you look at it, all right, they still had a small display port. Uh huh. All right. They didn't have shields. All right. They didn't have, you know, the, 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 the suits were, rem- were a nice. You know, the, the, the exosuits, when they had to do outside work, that was nice mm-hmm. and simple. It was something you could have dreamt that NASA would have made up. Um, you know, they, they didn't even have phasers until the middle of the first season. Uh, you know, it was, it was a good homage. To, they didn't have the red alert. Red alert didn't exist. Okay, so let's just, let's just take this movie-wise, right? Yeah. Forget Enterprise for a second. This is 10 years before Kirk, yeah. allegedly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think back to Star Trek the movie and the suit that Spock used to go check out V'ger. Exactly. Uh-huh. It looks like a regression from this suit. Yeah, that's my thing is, it looks like they went back to the Stone Age and then started over again. This No, see, this suit actually looks a lot like the suits from Lost in Space. <laughs> so if they had said that this was in the same universe as Lost in Space, the movie, yeah. you know, with Joey Tribbiani as the, as a space exactly. marine. If we saw Matt LeBlanc as captain, I'd believe it. See, Which, why wasn't Matt LeBlanc captain? But see, this is the other thing. The fact that this is only going to be on CBS streaming, the all-access thing. Yep. Okay. The have. question then the question then becomes are enough Star Trek people out there is this really going to be enough to make people say I need that Well let me ask you this question do you get CBS all access just because you have CBS No No, no. okay so it is an additional purchase yes. yes okay there's two levels of it Oh there's, perfect there's the cheap level does that include this Yes okay but you still get commercials. All right, a la Hulu, all right. You pay, if you like Hulu, you pay a little bit more and you get no commercials. Yeah. Which is why I have it, because that's how I watch NCIS. And the other things on CBS I watch, which I would, you know, I'm not going to go through an exhaustive list. Yeah. But, you know, I but, just... Uh, but to go back to your original statement, though, Shaggy, I have two minds of this, Okay. My one is you can't base your look off of the original series and Star Trek the movie, which looks like from now it would look camp if they try to do that. It it might look a little campy, but then you have to change it. You can't do this series. Well, that's you can't my go second back point. in time. That's my second point. Why do this series? There's that's, plenty. My, that's my problem. With it. Go keep going further into the future. Go after Voyager. Yes. There's plenty. It's a sci-fi show. Well, go as far into the future as you want. Well, Voyager's not even a question. Voyager has nothing to do with the main storyline of the Federation. The question is, what happened after Deep Space Nine? I I didn't watch Deep Space Nine. Well, Deep it Space was not Nine. my cup of tea. Well, Deep Space Nine is where everything happened. So there's a huge war. They're you know battling the Cardassians. So yeah. Nowadays it's just hilarious. <laughs> the Cardassians. 
Yes. Um, yeah, nobody could have predicted that was going to happen. <laughs> nobody. And if you did, you'd have been a million billionaire. You would have a whole bunch of Bitcoin. Yes. Oh, yes, you would. Yes, you would. Um, I want to go back in time, purchase Bitcoin and Amazon shares. Yes. Well, yes. I want to get those uh, two things. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of st stuff that happened in Deep Space Nine, and, and it would be an interesting question of what happens to the Federation then. But, no. They're going to go back before Kirk again. And it's like, we don't care. They were lucky to pull it off with Enterprise. Yes. And, and I... I think one of the only reasons they did it was the cast. And I don't think they pulled it off with Enterprise. I, was, I think I liked Enterprise. I really liked Enterprise as a show. Season one of Enterprise was great. I loved season one of Enterprise. Yes. The, the second season, I think, is when they started the whole thing. Two, with the, two and three, I agree. They were these sucky seasons. Like they, they should not have started doing anything with time. time. Yeah. The moment that a Star Trek series gets into time travel is when they're jumping the shark. That, on a, I can tell you right now. On a more than a single episode basis. Yeah. Or when they do the alternate evil universe episode. I hate those. I don't like those either. I the, the, hate those. A lot of people love them. Uh, I, I agree with you. But I do, I do like how it gives the actors the ability to stretch their legs a bit. But, yeah. I, I, I do not see the need for this, epi for this series. All right. Now. Let's go to a couple of remakes real quick. All right? Yep. Now, we know that there are... Well, actually, no. Let's stay on sci-fi, and let's talk about a show that looks interesting. It is sci-fi, um, but there's a big question about, is it going to be any good? Because um, it, it, it is a interesting mix of sci-fi and humor. And it's done by a guy who typically has pretty good hits. Mm -hmm. I mean, Seth MacFarlane hasn't had too many shows that haven't done well. I mean, other than maybe the Cleveland show. Yeah. Which I, I think universally, it, I think it lasted several seasons, but I don't think it was a huge hit. All right. But the Orville. All right. Another trailer. This one out by Fox. Seth MacFarlane is not only the executive producer. Uh, he's got John Favreau as one of the directors. And... Uh, Seth MacFarlane also plays one of the lead characters. He plays the captain. Now, Mike, did you see this trailer? I did. All right. So I think this is very interesting. And what, what I found interesting about it was if you watch the trailer, it looks very comedy-driven, okay? But if you read, some of the, read or watch some of the interviews, Seth MacFarlane actually says, yeah, Fox cut it really in a comedic way. Yes, it's funny, but it is not constant one-liners and things. They actually do try to take the science somewhat seriously because he said ever since he got into television, he wanted to do a sci-fi show. So he does give great reference, reverence to the sci-fi aspect of it. But he has to give his twist on it, which means it's going to be kind of funny. So, I, I mean, I respect that, and it's going to be interesting to see how much on each side of the line he is. You know, but in watching this trailer, it was it was me imagining Stewie Griffin or or Peter as captain of a starship. That's, and, you know, that's the problem. Like he he is a victim of his own creations. No yeah. matter what he does, he is always going to be tied back to Stewie Griffin. Yeah. But or I mean Ted or some animated character. But how bad is it to be, to be likened back to one of the most beloved characters in all of animation? You know? Because really, I, as much as the Simpsons are a part of pop culture, I think Family Guy is as well. You know, been around forever. So, you know. But here, we'll, we'll watch a little bit of the, uh, the Orville trailer and uh, let you guys see what that was all about. Have a seat. I have good news. There's a ship available. The USS Orville. Ever since I was a kid, I have wanted to serve on an exploratory vessel. You're nobody's first choice for this job. But we have 3,000 ships to staff, and we need captains. Can I have one of these mints? Those are marbles. We're giving you one last chance. 
And I love the the uh, uh, I just firestorm say I'm being thrilled there. to be your new captain. I want this to be an efficient ship, but also one that you're glad to be serving on. Lieutenant Commander Bordas, your entire species is male, isn't it? That is correct, sir. Probably not a lot of arguments about leaving the toilet seat up and that kind of thing, right? Bachlands urinate only once per year. Really? That's, I mean, I'm, I'm up two, three times a night. <laughs> that is unfortunate. It is. Time to meet the locals. So. Hi, I'm Captain Ed Mercer. Holy crap! <laughs> we don't mean your family any harm. Well, we did just shoot his dad. Aside from shooting your dad, we don't mean your family any harm. Captain, there's a message coming in from Admiral Halsey. It says that an executive officer has become available. No. No, 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 no. Oh, crap. Sorry, man. You okay? Yeah, it's all good, man. You okay? Yeah, all good. Sorry. All right, no worries. The Norm McDonald boys there. pleased at the arrival of his first officer. They were married. No way. You know how many times I tried to talk to you? You weren't hearing me or you were around all the I, said, I was no. the one who suggested couples camp. The therapist was your brother-in-law. This should be a really fun trip for all of us. Perhaps we should not be talking about this. Oh, no, no, no. We're, t we're talking about this. Th th this is a thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, to me, it looks it looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I like how they did get at least one Star Trek actor on there as well. Which one was that? The Doctor character. The. Oh, the, okay. She was uh, um, the wife of um, Cisco. Oh. Uh, oh, Keiko? No. no, that wasn't Keiko. No, Keiko is O'Brien's. Right, wife. yeah. Okay. I mean, it'll it'll be interesting to see. Until we see the first episode, we won't know how much he leans in either direction. Yeah. But it it looks pretty good so far. And it is promising. I'll tell you this. It looks more promising for a long-term future than young Sheldon. Have you really? guys seen the trailer for that? That trailer has blown up so big that oh. that show is going to get renewed just off of that. It it has blown up big, but how long can you stay on that joke? I have no idea. How long can you can you how, sit on the anal retentive joke? How long has the original show been going on? <laughs> I know, but you have yes, more characters. But than the that. original show had a whole other cast of characters that created additional storylines. This is a nine-year-old kid that's going to school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you okay. had you had Leonard and Penny, and you had Raj and every girl in the world, and you know you had you had you know uh, Howard and Bernadette. I mean, you had all these other side plots that have, this guy was getting put in the middle of, and I just don't know that you're going to get that with this kid, as good as he is, because he does seem to be really well at acting here. I've never now, seen an entire episode of Big Bang Theory, so oh, but, see, that's now, why you. Here is, here is, if this show takes off, okay, this poor kid is going to, well, one, he'll probably be set for life and it won't matter, but this kid is going to suffer from the Harry Potter syndrome, okay, that he's going to have to go do gay porn in order to not be young Sheldon anymore by the time the show goes off the air. Yeah. And right? I, I do like that they have... Uh... And, and wait, wait, any, any Harry Potter fanboys, listen, that's not to imply that any of them went to do gay porn, because they didn't, that I know of. No, uh, but Daniel Radcliffe did get naked Tell you what, on the stage of the theater. Well, let's so, show this particular subject because we'll be talking about it more later. Gay porn? No, child stars. Oh, okay. I was, I was trying to figure out where you were going. Child stars? <laughs> um, but... Uh, I do okay, like. I was it. just making sure that there was no reference to our movie reviews that you were talking about. I was like, "Wait, did I watch the wrong movies?" <laughs> yes, there's a there's a very famous child star in one our, of our movies. I completely missed it as well, Mike. I'm looking forward to this revelation. Oh no, no, no! Now, I, now I know who he's talking about. Okay, I don't. So that's good. I know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, by the way, coming up in the double feature movie review in about a half an hour. We have uh, two movies. I won't say good. I won't say bad. They're going to be up to us and you to decide. Uh, we have a talking cat. Question and mark, exclamation mark, or and, something like that. Yeah. And paramedics. Uh, I will say is that a talking cat has a sequel that we're not going to see. Really? I didn't even know it had a sequel. Yeah, it has You've a sequel. You've done a lot more research than I have. It has a sequel named A Talking Pony, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark. <laughs> okay. 
I'm so glad I didn't do too much research on that movie. Um, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, the one thing I did like about the young Sheldon was it reminded me of, it wasn't Malcolm in the Middle. What was the one, uh, the Wonder Years that had the voiceover work? Yes. All right. Yeah. So, so they did get the guy who plays Sheldon, that I can't remember what the hell his name is right now, but they did get him to do all the voiceover work. So you do have that running through it, and that does seem to reinforce the fact that that is this guy yeah. when he was younger. And so that, that did work. I like that they did that. All right. Um, moving right along. In other news, the, the, the let's, let's, we do have two. Yeah, let's get off the science fiction one, yeah. and let's hit Roseanne. Yeah, so we have two TV shows that are coming back for limited runs. Uh, which you may or may not be excited about. Both of these, I think, one's definitely, most definitely an 80s show. It was yeah. late 80s, early 90s. Very early 90s. But it was, I think it was like huge 85 through like 92, I'm going to say. Yeah. Somewhere in that time frame. And the other one was huge like right afterwards. So that it picked up at like 92 to like 97, mm -hmm. I'll say. I'm just taking a guess here. Um, so first off, the Roseanne cast is reuniting. And they're going to be doing a eight-episode reboot. So if you were a fan of Roseanne, um, especially if you were pissed about the last episode. The entire the last, last season. season. Yeah. I'm hoping it's the entire last season. They're, they're saying that Dan's alive. They didn't win the lottery. All right. All that stuff out the window. Yes. The reboot is worth it just to do that. All right. Now, you've got some purists out there that say, well, you're destroying the legacy of Roseanne, you're, to which I say it was destroyed. It was destroyed. We, are, we are restoring the legacy yeah. of Roseanne. Now, what's interesting here is, are we going to see the, uh, one of the characters come back because he is on Big Bang Theory? I say that David doesn't come back in the reboot. I think if Dave, David... Well, wait a second. Where is Roseanne airing? Dude? ABC. Hmm. So, competing network. Yeah, but Sheldon's mom is coming back. And she is on Big Bang. Yeah, but she's only an occasional. She's not a contracted yeah. actor. True, but the next... Okay. Spoiler alert, if you watch The Big Bang Theory. All I will say is that the way that the last season just ended, there's a good possibility that Sheldon's mom is going to have an increased role for the next season. Possible spoiler. Possible. But... I think I think that David might make like a cameo. Yeah, I mean I I guess maybe a cameo, you know, uh, but it's going to be really short. I don't yeah. think that it's going to be a big thing. I'm actually surprised well, I guess I'm kind of surprised that Darlene is going to be on there cuz I mean, she's already got it's not the is she on the view? Is that the one she's on or is she I on the no. talk or something? Is it the talk? The talk or the chew or the yeah, the, it's the, the talk. Five girls not over over talking each other or something right, like she's that. On the, she's on the she's on the talk then. Yeah. Um, you know, and as well as does make an occasional appearance on Big Bang Theory, not quite so often in the last couple seasons, but she's definitely been on it. Hmm. Um, you know, which was yeah. Yeah, see, you've never seen that, so yeah. you don't know these things. Right. I, I also I was on it. That's about it. Yeah. I yeah. also like how they're they're going to have the original Becky, but replacement Becky, who I prefer, Sarah Chalk, is going to play a different role. So they're going to bring her back, and I'm sure there'll be some weird interactions between her and Becky. Yeah. Yeah, it'll probably something like, "Hey, you know what? We kind of look alike. We could we could almost we could almost be twins and swap out." You know, something stupid. Uh, but you know, I. The other question I had is: Is Tom is Tom Arnold going to come back for a cameo? Oh man, him and Roseanne on screen again together. No, that's not going to happen. Well, uh, yeah, I doubt they, it. They 
he was at her roast. Well, yeah. <laughs> Of course, he and was supposedly they made up. No, supposedly they made up at that point. Well, let's see here. I, I I saw him talking about something recently. I don't think. I don't think that's happening. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. You know what? Really, what it really comes down to is it really doesn't matter as long as John Goodman's there. I'm watching. Yeah, I missed, but he has lost a ton of weight. Yeah, since so, he played that role. No, he's gained a lot of weight and then lost the weight. I don't think he's that much smaller than he was. Oh, really? Because I thought that he had still lost a lot of weight. Oh, he lost a lot of weight, but not so much that he couldn't play that role still. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Um, you know, I like, I, to go to your point, though, I like Tom Arnold. He used to do, he used to have this show, I think it was on CMT, called My Big Redneck Wedding. That was great. Now, at the time, he was drinking a lot. <laughs> but, uh, but it was a hilarious show. And, I mean, it was, it was just as bad as you think it was. Hmm. But it was, and I, I cannot find recordings of the super yep. thing. I want to find recordings of it because it was so hilarious. As far as Will and Grace goes, I believe it basically was, you know what? I, I think this is not me talking. This is, you know, the, the, the network's internet. Going, the network's going, you know what? We should probably do another Will and Grace kind of show. And then they did a Will and Grace reunion, and they were like, oh, well, we already have a Will and Grace show. Well, they did, they did the Will and Grace little thing snippet thing for the election right and there was such a huge hoopla about it that they thought that they got inundated with the request to bring it back mm -hmm. and you know i don't think other than the one actor playing in travelers i don't think many of them have much else going on no they, they used to but they're kind of it, it's a good time yeah because so, uh, i don't know the guy's name will yeah, he had a show on TNT for a while where he was a professor who was schizophrenic or something. So. But that's which, over. Which, by the way, did you see Travelers got picked up for a second season? Uh, yes, actually, I did. I was glad to hear that. And what what other ones got picked up? Um, the Magicians got picked up. Uh, Arrow. Got picked up. I'm trying. I'm just going through the ones that I know I watch. Arrow got picked up. Um, Agents of Shield got picked up, which I was surprised by. Uh, Last Man Standing was canceled. Yeah, Last Man, which, 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 there's, you know, of course, with that one, there was all the scuttle about. Is it because of their conservative views? And they were, you know, they were making fun of the snowflakes, and you know, it's just another example of. Uh, you know, liberal media trying to keep the conservative view down. You know. So, yeah, I, I think it came down to money. I, usually what it comes down to is, does the network own the show? Because if the network owns the show, then they're much more likely to keep the show. That's why elementary is still being made, even though nobody watches it. Because CBS has sold the rights to elementary overseas and makes a boatload of money doing that. So, now we could go to more stories, or between now and the movie reviews, we could go through other reboot options. Well, actually, I um, there was... Gosh, I, I, I lost my train of thought because yes. I had somebody text me in the middle of something. Um, there, was, uh, there was something else I wanted to touch on there that I just completely freaking forgot, and, of course, the dog's a little... <laughs> busy right now um, okay so that means that we're going to go through the the movie reboot 80s, options, the, the movie reboot now i this article popped up and i went through it there are either 16 or 17 movies from the 80s listed on here and i disagree with just about all of them yes as far as remakes some of them I sort of agree with, but for the most part, I don't. So, right off the bat, the first movie they recommend, they say deserves a reboot, The Last Starfighter. 
Robert Preston isn't alive anymore. Doesn't matter. They should. This is one of those movies you don't mess with. I, I agree. I think somebody needs to make a movie using the same theme. That's fine. But don't remake Last Starfighter. Yeah, I don't. Last, I don't want to see Last Starfighter ruined because that was that was that was a movie of first. I mean, I think that was the first movie to actually do CGI. Yes. You know, it was as, as campy as it may seem now. It was a great movie when it came out. Yes. I mean, it was it, it was the one that everybody wanted to see at the drive-in. It was also the first movie that d did all of its space scenes with CGI. Yeah. Not practical effects. Yeah. So you take that for what it's worth. Yeah, I, I could be wrong today, but Robert Preston is the guy who plays Centauri. The, uh, the, so. uh, the Huckster guy. Yeah. And... You cannot make that movie without him. No. Number two. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. That doesn't even make any sense. What part? Remake. Because the movie didn't really make sense, but go ahead. I, that's what I mean. How can you remake something that doesn't make any sense? There's no way that you could make a movie that has anything to do with Buckaroo, Buckaroo Banzai. You can make any other movie and stick the name on there and say it's a remake, and it would be just as effective. Shaggy, thoughts? I didn't really like the original. I hate you. Okay. I, I mean, it was all right, but it was, I, it's not something I ever watch again. Even if it's on TV and I'm flipping through, I don't stop. I will say it's a movie that I wish I had seen for the first time when I was younger. I was too old to really... Get it. I just never. I, I'm not sure what this movie is. The next one. Prince of Darkness. I uh, don't think I saw it. I don't know, but I see the guy from They Live. I see Egg Chen. And I see uh, Wang from. From Big Trouble in Little China? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Well... All right. War Games. They already, no. they already did remake it. Well, they didn't remake it. They made a sequel. Yeah. But, no, you can't remake that show. It was definitely a moment in time yeah. movie. Yeah. And Maury Chakin's died, dead, so we can't do that either. All right, The Goonies. They have been talking about doing a Goonies. A Goonies sequel, Not... you could see doing something with the kids of the original Goonies. That could be something. Well, we never did and, find out what the hell what else was, you know, to go after that ship. Yeah. You know. Right. So that there's been talk about that for years, but the guy that played Sloth, not that it matters, he's dead. Yeah. Josh Brolin is way too big to be doing any of this now. Like, he is a legit actor. Martha Plimpton, she's an okay actor. I mean, a lot of these guys, half of them have moved on to better careers and, and you know. Guy the guy who played Chunk is so tired of doing the truffle shuffle that he just out and out refuses anymore. Well, not only that, but he went and he lost a whole lot of weight, so he, a yeah. truffle shuffle to him now is actually more like, I don't know, Jazzercise. Uh, Dippendale dance, yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, Corey Feldman has his music career, yeah. so <laughs> he's not going to do yeah, him any and, goonies. Him and the Angels are, uh, are, are too busy rocking out. Mm. Alright, next one. Ice Pirates. No, just no. Again, Do not it's... touch this. This is cheese beyond belief. <laughs> yeah. This is an awesome movie, as is. Yeah, Leave you, it alone. You, you might, can't you, remake B movies. <laughs> you might as well make remake Spaceballs. What's the point? Yeah. All right, Willow. Now he he wants to do a sequel. I could see a sequel, but he's this... still alive. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. He was in the Harry Potter movies. Sorry. He's in all the Harry Potter movies and all the Star Wars movies. I don't know these things. He has a game show in the UK. I don't know these things. He, he is the world's biggest um, uh, agent for very tall and very short people. Okay. Um, I didn't, I yeah, didn't Warwick, think that. Warwick Davis. 
If you look through my Plex server, there's a bunch of Warwick Davis stuff on there. Okay, well, you can't have Val Kilmer. Uh, he apparently is back. I still think he's going to drop dead of cancer because he miraculously cured himself of cancer. Uh, he never had cancer, don't you know? Uh, apparently, because okay. they are they're, they're doing a sequel to Top Gear, and he's all about it. Top Gun. No, Top, Top Gun. Gun. Top Gun. Top Gear. All right, next you one. cross those two worlds, and let's not even talk about that sequel. No, but as for him miraculously he healing himself, okay, let's just – okay, Rhoda's still around. Screwed me over two years in a row in the damn death pool. <laughs> that's just not – that's just wrong. Okay, moving on. Eight. Crow. Crow. No. This is another B movie. Don't remake it. No, it's good as is. It's horrible and it's perfect. Okay, it's it's horrible. It's got the original fidget spinner. <laughs> yes, it does. Fidget spinner of death. It's got horrible effects with the beast. Yeah. But it's just that... no. Now this next one, Shaggy. I'd love I that. think this one des deserves a remake. I love this. We movie. need a remake. I, but I like this movie as it was. I know, you uh, but it was known movie. by That's a why... different. But it was known by a different name. What was it known by? It was known by. There was two names for this movie. Was, there was Gleaming I, the Cube. I always knew it as Gleaming the Cube. Uh, but there was another name for it uh, that I don't remember. Uh, what was it? It was. You're oh, such a was, fan, but you don't remember the. Uh, I, I no, I don't remember the name of the alternate name. He remembers that there was an alternate name. Yeah, uh, I, I don't even think we've seen this one. It was oh, crap. What was it? Um, oh, and of course the FAQ is empty. Um, quotes, goofs, trivia. Uh, is there more trivia? Because there's got to be another trivia. So that had Tony Hawk in it. That's why it's so cool. Uh, you know. But uh, and Christian oh, Slater, a brother, the alternate title of this film is called A Brother's Justice. Uh, sure. Okay. Because so, he, he was avenging his brother who died. Okay. So, listen. Watch. I'm going to remake one of the best scenes from Gleaming the Cube right now. Okay. And then show a guy doing skateboard tricks. Because that's all <laughs> Christian Slater did. Yeah. <laughs> and showed the feet. In the warehouse with the, doing all the tricks and stuff, yeah. and the Christian Slater's just standing there, and then they cut back to the feet. Yeah, and then Christian Slater back to the feet. <laughs> all right, next one, airplane. You can't, I, you no. can't do it today. No, you, you cannot do that movie today. No, no, you absolutely cannot. No, you, you, I mean, this is the Citizen Kane of parody movies. You might as well remake Citizen Kane. Well, you can't. Most Mel Brooks movies cannot be redone. Okay. Well, this isn't a Mel Brooks movie. This no. is the Zucker uh, Brothers Zucker movie. Brothers movie. But yeah. still, same, same difference. Yes. All right, Short Circuit 2. Why would you remake the sequel but not the original? Yeah, they should remake the original. But as, we we've, already, as we've already discussed, uh, while one actor does need work, there's no way – that you could cast the other one as his Indian assistant. No. But honestly, who voiced Johnny Five? I don't remember. Here, let's see if this works. Hold on. Uh, okay, Google. Who did the voice of Johnny Five in Short Circuit? Tim Blaney. Tim Blaney. Tim Blaney. Tim Blaney. Yep. So, as far as I'm concerned, as long as... He's known for his work on Men in Black, Short Circuit 2, and Short Circuit. That's his bio. Yeah. Well, he's also... I guess he's a Muppet performer, among other things. Oh, Which makes he, sense. He was, he was also a puppeteer on Flight of the Navigator. That's okay, a movie that could be remade. Yeah. Well, let's be clear about this, all right? Short Circuit 2, in this whole scene where he, he joins the gang... There's no way that would fly today. No. No. Everyone would get offended. Forget the fact that Fisher Stevens slapped on. You might as well remake Soul Man and do it, do it as a double feature with this movie. <laughs> oh, God. You might no. as well. No. Uh, well. There was one. Tootsie. Remake Tootsie. 
a triple feature. There you go. <laughs> no, Tootsie, Tootsie, the only reason people would get offended by Tootsie at this point is the fact that Tootsie wasn't going, was just cross-dressing, not trying to do a gender reassignment surgery. Right. So Tootsie was taking a job from a transgender person. Yeah. Whereas Soul Man, you don't hear about this movie very often anymore, do you? <laughs> no. no, you don't. And there's probably a good who, who damn reason why. I wonder if, uh, who was it? Who was the main? St. Thomas Howell. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how, if, if he caught a whole lot of crap for that movie anymore. Because he was in it quite a bit. He was in Side Out. That's the movie I remember him most for. Um, it was, he was in Side Out. He was in The Outsiders. He, you know, that's where he kind of got his, his start. He was in Red Dawn. Yep. See, but here's the thing. So for Tootsie... Um, Mrs. Doubtfire and Bosom Buddies. None of those work if the person actually wants to dress like a woman. Okay. Side note that I just learned about Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. <laughs> Care to take a guess of which TV show Mrs. Doubtfire was actually a loosely based spinoff from? This is an interesting piece of trivia. I've never heard, not no. heard this one. I, 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 I... The plot for Mrs. Doubtfire was originally written by Tim Allen as a sequel to Home Improvement, where Tim and Jill got divorced, and Tim took on the role, the job of a, a nanny in disguise to be able to visit the kids. Huh. And he, Ne yeah. they, the production company never even gave him a green light, but the script was reworked into Mrs. Doubtfire. Thank you. And thank you for this piece of information. Yeah. Okay. And, and thank you for them not letting Tim Allen do it. Yes. Yeah, no. Okay, so... Johnny Five, uh, bring back a new version of Johnny Five with the same voice, and you can make a movie around it. It'd be great. Right. Next one. Gremlins. Gremlins. Yeah. No. Um... Uh, no. Part of the part of the problem with Gremlins is the fact that they made Gremlins two. Uh, That's the that only was... problem and with that... Gremlins. Yeah. And Gremlins two tarnished the image of Gremlins. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, so, all right. Next I mean, one. Evil. Spe evil. Spe I've never heard of this one, but I feel like I feel like um, the 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 other Howard brother needs Clint Howard needs work, so maybe. Yeah. Clint Howard always needs work. But, but at the same time, Ron Howard is always making movies. So therefore, Clint true. Howard always has a job. It's true. Pretty in Pink. Uh, I don't, the entire cast. No, the, the entire, uh, what, were the, what was those guys called? Ro Rob Lowe and all them. The Brat, Brat, Brat Pack. Uh, Brat Pack. Yeah, all of the Brat Pack movies. So. Well, oh, basically any John, John Hughes movie. Yeah. No, they don't. No, they don't blow. They just should not be touched. Uh, they're classics. Um, Andrew McCarthy hmm. was in so many movies in that time period. You know? Okay. Uh, 15, Iron Eagle. Don't you dare touch that goddamn movie. All right. One of my favorite movies of all time. Beats the crap out of Top Gun. All right. Well, Listen, you, 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 can't, you can't have Iron Eagle without Lou Gossett Jr. No. But I could see getting a new movie like Iron Eagle. Just don't no. call it Iron Eagle. No, because in order to film this movie with the amount of realism that audiences demand, it basically it would be a how-to manual for North Korea. That's a good. Yeah, point. Uh, yeah no. So no. Oh, I, I will stab people who want to do the next one. Et. <laughs> no. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Steven Spielberg will stab anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and ironically, you look at the picture. Who's that in the left? Yeah, Steven Spielberg's way back there in headphones. No. The other one. That's oh. C. Thomas Howell. Yeah. So. And the last one. I don't know that flight. movie. Neither do I. The Flight of the Dragons. It's animated, so Colin must know it. I don't know that one, and I, I, I know that particular era of animation. 
and I have no idea why anybody would want him. But that's it. Well, this one, this one could very well. Okay, any any time you talk about an animated movie, doing a, an update like where it was this a television, one, it's like drawn. It was a television animated movie. Okay, so doing something like this, and not necessarily doing live action, but doing a CGI update, if you will, I could always see that happening. And yeah. Yeah, this is not one that was like a great, well known yeah. animated movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like Bed Knobs and Broomsticks or Mary Poppins or, you know, where they were mixed, you know, hybrid shows. Or even like any of the classic Disney movies. Not if like they tried a, to do those. Not like a Peach update. Dragon or. A... Right. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't they remake Peach Dragon? Yes. Yes, no. they did. Did they actually call it Peach Dragon, though? Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah. Hate those people. Now, let's think of some 80s action movies that we would like to see remade. Um, this one kind of came across the other day. Uh, it, it, it's, in that, and then it's in that action comedy realm. Adventures in Babysitting. That one could uh, be remade. But why? That is another classic. That's almost. I like, don't know that it's that classic. I mean, I kind of included it in the Brat Pack, Brat Pack section. I mean, maybe, but it wasn't. Because it's another John Hughes, I think. Was that John Hughes? I, I think know. so. Uh, let's see, '80s action movies, huh? I, I was thinking Firefox which could be a pretty good remade because it's original effects. I mean, that's one you could remake without reshooting it. I wouldn't yeah. want to see him remake Space Camp. Like that one. Yeah, Space Camp. Is a bit, but if you can take Firefox, you take all the original footage with Clint Eastwood and redo the, the effects to make so that people could watch it and know what's going on. You know what genre you could remake and nobody would complain? Western. Like, say you were to remake McClintock. Right. Uh, I disagree, because they remade True Grit, and people were pissed about it. But didn't oh, they try to Grit. modernize it? No. No? No. I mean, I just, I don't know. I... But people have modernized, I mean, um, there's a, uh, one of my favorite uh, Western movies was uh, Rio Bravo. Uh, and, I liked, and I loved it, because what we had, uh, had a history teacher... And I think it was 10th grade, no, 8th grade, showed it to us in school. So we got to watch that for several days in a row instead of our usual boring stuff. Okay, uh, I think, go ahead, I'm sorry. That one's been remade done. multiple times uh, in modern movies. Uh, I'm trying to remember the, the, the precinct, uh, it was, uh, I think it was Carpenter's. A anytime you have a, 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 a movie where people or hold up in a, in a prison or a jail or something, and people are attacking, and nobody is coming to help. They're remaking Rio Bravo. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I would like. I would like to see something with a remake of Rio Bravo. I would like to see Cobra with Sylvester Stallone remade. Better that than Over the Top. <laughs> Over the Top. <laughs> <laughs> Over the top. Wow. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know. 80s action movies. I mean, I don't remember a whole lot of 80s. I would like to see them redo Cannonball Run. I think it would be interesting, but I don't want them to call it Cannonball Run. I want them to come up with another one. You know, it's, it's, it's like. I'll tell you what, why don't they call it Gumball Rally? Because nobody remembers that damn movie. And it was or, basically or, the same uh, thing. Speed Zone. Or Mad, 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 Mad World. You know, they could, they could call it, you know... <laughs> why don't they do that Can't anymore? Drive 55. There was that whole genre of movies where you find a whole bunch of stars, slam them into a movie... Because they can't afford it. They can barely afford movies with two lead actors in them. No, no, it's not good the, actors. Just the only the reason that the Avengers keep getting made is because Disney was able to build a whole damn theme park around it. Well, I, all right. Let's see here. No, they, no, they let's can't. see here. 
What movie they can't build a theme park around? What movie, Mike? You can you might be able to guess this one. What movie do we? What movie franchise do we know has a ton of celebrities in it? Ones are actually begging to be cameoed in it on a regular basis and is highly anticipated every time a new one's released. What movies, Mike? Sharknado. Exactly. That that's is true. this generation's Cannonball Run. That's true. That's true. All right. So, I mean, I guess we just have to wait for Sharknado 5 to get the next movie that we're all going to love. Not because it's a good movie, but because we get to see everybody in it. Everybody who hasn't already been killed. Yeah. No, oh, no, bring them back. They're the twins. That doesn't the stop them. All right. Um, it is 7.30 wait, 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 now. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go yes. on, there is a premiere date for Sharknado 5. Uh-huh. 8-6-17. All right, August 6, 17, uh, that is probably, hopefully, like a Saturday. Is that a Saturday? Yeah. August 6, is Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Do we want to live, do we want to live tweet it again? Yes. Yeah. All right. I think we do. All right, there we go. August, August 6, 2017, PCR Radio will be live tweeting during Sharknado. Okay, Google. Remind me to live tweet Sharknado 5 on August 6th. Okay. You want to save this? Yes, please. Okay. Reminder saved. All right. Okay. Now I have a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this evening we had two movies to review. We had oh, God. A Talking Cat and Paramedics. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Gail wrote in with an 80s action movie that needs to be remade, and she is absolutely right. Okay. Which one? Jim Connor. Jim Connor. I don't even know that movie, I don't think. Oh, this movie just showed up. Popped, it's funny because it popped up in my timeline. That is a great pull. It had gold medalist, gold medal gymnast Kurt um, Warner. Yes, I think. No. 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 Kurt Warner was a quarterback. Kurt something. Schilling. Yeah. Yeah, help me out here. Who was I don't know how to I don't know how to spell the name of this movie you're talking about. <sighs> okay, Google. Kurt Angle. He was a wrestler. He starred in Jim Connor. Here's some results from a search. That Aha. Uh -huh. Kurt Thomas. Okay. An American gymnast travels to a foreign country to compete in a deadly game not won by anyone other than a native in more than 900 years. So it's a gymnastics version of blood sport. So it is... Uh, and there's a scene where he has to go through the village of the damned, and in the middle of the village, there happens to be a pommel horse. Okay. And he does a routine on the pommel horse and kicks about 50 zombie crazies' asses. All right, so let me ask you this, because you're probably familiar with this movie, Best of the Best. Could it be redone? You cannot, you cannot remake that movie. <laughs> you cannot remake that movie. All right, all right. You, that is an awesome movie. Don't touch it. I'll cut you, I'll burn you, I'll pee on you, and then I'll burn you again. <laughs> because my pee is excellent. <laughs> all right. Um, well, I, I've got a bit of an audio track here. That uh, that should be able to get us into our next uh, our next bit. So help me God, if it's what I think it is, I'm going to be very very it mad. Could, it could be what you think it is. I don't know. I'm not sure what you think it is. I heard this and I really like it. Come on, you gotta love this. Alright, so for those of you that are interested, that's Earth, Wind, and Ozzy's by DJ Cumberbund. We featured it on uh, on our Facebook page. Because it was so good, I couldn't wait until the show. 
And I just got a new. I just got a notice saying that my VR headset is shipping, Mike. Nice. I'm looking forward to that. And I, I did get turned down for the for the 360 camera, but I think I may buy one anyway. I told you you were going to get turned down for that, but yeah, it was. Hey, worst thing they could do is tell you no. Now, remind me after the show. I have. Let me see how. How I don't even know how many files I have in here, but I I have a whole folder of mashups. I have 41 mashups. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, which one do we want to do first? A talking cat or paramedics? Oh, I don't care. Let's do paramedics first. All right, let's do let's paramedics get first. Get it out of the way. Uh, get I, it out of the way. I have very little to say about that movie. All right. Well, oh, Colin, God, yeah. I'll let you start. First, yes. I have a question for Shaggy. Okay. Ready. Shaggy, would you... Uh, Said we should watch this movie. Yeah. You said at least one of the hosts is going to like this one. Yep. Who are you thinking of? Well, I, me. Oh, no, I, well, yeah, me, uh, for the most part. I, well, actually, I was thinking Mike okay. as well would, would enjoy it. But we all know what my <laughs> tastes are like. <laughs> so. Because well, most of my review is about taste. Okay. Yeah. You know, as we said earlier, I love airplanes. I love uh, Mel Brooks movies. Yep. Almost every single Mel Brooks movies, even Men in Tights. Um, Marx Brothers. You know, people making fun of other genres of movies. I love them all. Yep. Okay? Uh, Police Squad. Yep. Uh, Naked Gun. Um, hey, what's the other police one? Um, uh, police Academy? Police Academy. All of those movies, any of those movies, watch any of those movies other than paramedics. Because <laughs> the people who made paramedics don't know how to make one of those movies. Um, I, I was watching it, and I was going, for the second time, for, for these two movies, I was like, why are we watching this? Why was it made? Who thought this was a good idea? I... Not, not who made it, thought it was a good idea to watch it. Who thought it was a good idea to make it? So, this is a movie about paramedics. Paramedics who have a, uh, a uh, ambulance that they have modified to go faster. So when they want it to go faster, then the back of the ambulance lifts higher up off the tires. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if, if you want to have better handling, you would drop the ambulance down lower, not pop it up higher like it's on springs. Well, do you mind if I chime in here just real quick? Yes. Do you remember Super Pursuit Mode from Knight Rider? This was a bad version of Super Pursuit Mode. <laughs> okay. Super Pursuit Mode added a giant wing to the back of Kit. Made it Made Kit less aerodynamic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So. It was also very stupid. This was stupider. But here, in a nutshell, is my problem with this movie. Uh huh. They added the ability <coughs> to uh, suntan within the ambulance by putting in a window that they could open on the top of the ambulance. And so the character opens it up and then lays there with a mirror to try and shine the sun more on his face. To better tan within the ambulance. Oh, that was but, a bedpan. Oh, I thought it was an actual. Tan. That was a bedpan. Oh, it's a bed even worse. It's a bedpan. <laughs> but here's here's the bad, the, the part that is in a nutshell describes this movie. There's no sun coming through the top of the ambulance. You have the mirror of the bedpan, which seems to be saying, "I'm going to take this beam of sunlight coming through the top of this ambulance and suntan with it," but there's no beam of light. He does not get any lower. I mean, it, it just, it's just the same thing as if there was no sunroof there. Um, I, I, I watched this entire movie. I watched both, all of both these movies. And uh, this is the first one in this review segment to get puke. Because, Wow. Wow, was this a bad movie? And it just it, it comes down to 
It's supposed to be a funny movie. It's supposed to be in the vein of all those other movies that I mentioned. There was nothing actually funny in this entire movie. I, I take it back. There was one funny joke. I forget what it but it was so inconsequential, I forget what it was now. All right, Mike, you want to go next? Okay. So the first thing when I start this movie, all right, now Shaggy kind of set the press in when he emailed and said, let's watch this. I think you'll like it. It's Police Academy with Ambulance. I'm like, you're setting a high bar here. So I'm just going to lower that. I'm going to lower that bar before I even start watching it. <laughs> just a little bit. This way I won't be disappointed. Unfortunately, I didn't lower it and put it on the floor. <laughs> now, so I hit play. And what in the hell are these? There's two black bars on either side of my screen. What the? Shaggy, you picked a 4-3 format movie? Did they even still make those? This is the first movie we have ever reviewed. I went back and I checked. It is the <laughs> first movie that we ever reviewed that was not in widescreen format. That's a bad sign. <laughs> and a new disqualifier. <laughs> so I'm watching. Really? And my first Robinson is, Crusoe on Mars was in widescreen? I didn't see that one. We, we didn't redo that one. Oh, no, maybe only I did. I don't remember. That, that may be what started this whole thing. <laughs> so, as I'm watching it, I'm like, this is, okay, this is going to be bad. So, Christopher McDonald, with his blonde perm. Yeah. Not enough male celebrities have blonde perms. I'm sorry, blonde perm mullets. Yeah. And this Sexy. is a look that I think needs to come back. <laughs> Um, shorts and Nissan. When in the hell was this movie made? Okay, because I know that's kind of the fashion now to wear knee socks with your shorts and, and black sneakers, but that was, this was not made recently. So th that means that they did this the first time that that was in style. 1988. Good Lord Christ. Okay. I And suddenly I'm having a bad flashback like I've sat through this movie before. And I don't, I know this is supposed to be a bad movie, but this storyline is just, the, the, the story was making me angry. This movie, at this point, I'm wondering, I had to go and check and see, was this movie ever part of Mystery Science Theater 3000? <laughs> if not, it should have been. No, they don't do comedies. The doctor's taking more drugs than a Studio 54 regular. At this point in the movie, which, okay. Hey, finally found the first redeeming part. The French girl ain't got no panties on. <laughs> I noticed that too. So of course you did. You're a pervert. And now Shaggy gets to see boobies. Okay. A car with a red velvet interior. Crushed velvet interior. Yes, we've established this movie is old, but I'm going to point it out again for posterity. I don't even think red is an option in interiors anymore. Gray, tan, black. That's it. That's it. And seeing this stupid rap at the end of the movie. Now I know. This was part of a time where every movie had to have some kind of rap segment in order to be considered cool. And this rap, that's what I thought you were going to start this movie review section with. You probably went out there and found the soundtrack and downloaded the paramedics rap to lead us in, at which point I probably would have spit on my webcam. <laughs> so puke to Snikey. Is it, is it we don't have anything worse than a puke, right? <laughs> no. No. But you if there is, it'd be this movie. Okay, so the puke it is. This movie is I felt like Stan's grandfather during this entire thing. I wasn't about to tap out, but I'm literally sitting there like Kill me. I wish I were dead. I'd kill myself, but I can't move. I'm paralyzed by the stupidity of this movie. Billy, how'd you like to make a dollar, Billy? You, you know what? I, actually, I, I, I'll change. I, 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 I have an idea. What? We do have a new classification below puke. 
Shaggy? Because <laughs> no. he seems to they, pick them. The classification will be known as FDR American Badass. No, wait, wait a second. We like that movie. We? I, I, well, I thought you liked <laughs> that movie. What's this we shit, balding white man? <laughs> You know what? If I said I like that movie, my my esteem of that movie has gone down since then because I don't. Well, all right. So real quickly here before this disintegrates any further. All right. Paramedics. I knew I had watched before, but it had been so long. I didn't even remember the name of the movie to try and find it again. This just so happened to have popped up in my Amazon feed. And so I watched it and I like the movie so much, I convinced the guys to drop another one that we were supposed to watch for this week so that they could watch this fine film instead, thinking at least we'll have one redeeming show to watch this week because we've watched a lot of crap lately. So we should watch something good. Because I enjoyed the film, all right? It starts out very, you know, well, where you have Karen Lore, uh, and Ray Walston. Ray, you, Ray Walston is an elderly gentleman who's having a heart attack. The two main characters, uh, George Newbern and Christopher McDonald, playing Uptown and Mad Mike, come to resuscitate him. And out of the bathroom walks a nearly nude Karen Lore, who's never referred to by name in the film, just referenced as the woman who will have sex with anyone and then they get into some type of medical trouble, either a heart attack, a car crash, or what something. Um, you know, so that's always a good way to start. Um, in fact, my wife watched this movie with me. All right? Normally, I don't get her to watch a movie with me. She even thought this movie was okay. She said it wasn't that bad. Um, so... Uptown and Mad Mike then go back to the uh, ambulance station. They are confronted by their uh, captain, Captain Prescott, played by John P. Ryan. And uh, they are then reassigned to the worst ambulance company in town because uh, Captain Prescott is tired of, of dealing with their hotshot heroics and their, uh, and their disregard for the rules. And they are moved into essentially a war zone in the town. And that's when they meet up with other, um, with other ambulance drivers, um, Javier something Mexican and Lawrence Hilton Jacobs and a man who I originally thought was Louis Gossett Jr. Because evidently I am racist, uh, Robert DeCoy. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I was so happy that I did not actually send you a note going, yeah, Louis Gossett Jr. is in this. Because I really thought that he was. Um, <laughs> you know, I was really glad that he wasn't, or that, that I did not send that. All right, so, um, <laughs> but, but, yeah, I really thought that the guy who played Moses was Louis Gossett Jr. for a second. And then I'm like, ooh, dodged a bullet on that one. Um, but what was interesting, one of the things that pulled me into this movie was Sally Kellerman. Now, some of you are saying, who in the hell is Sally Kellerman? Well, if you've seen the movie Meatballs or Back to School, Back to School, you'll know her as the teacher who Rodney Dangerfield fell in love with. Um, Meatballs, yeah, she, I just know she was in there. Um, several other things. Uh, you know, one of the things that was interesting that I only s noticed on second viewing, yes, I watched it twice, um, was it's her voice. It is her voice in the, um, as the dispatcher, but it is not her body. She is not actually the actress playing the part. They have somebody else. They got her voice. And it is, it's pretty interesting uh, that they split that up that way. Um, but the voice is what got me and what, what kind of pulled me back. So anyway, they, uh, hilarity ensues in my mind on this show. And Ooh. I really liked it. I give it a smile. So, can't. <laughs> can't. All right. Next up is a talking cat. And if you guys don't mind, I'll go first on this one. Go right ahead. Uh, Hold on. Yes. One Your m mic is muted, I think. Oh, okay. If you're green, then you're good. Press and hold. There you go. Now you're on. Okay. Yes, mine was the one that was making the feedback ah. noise. Oh, ah, okay. Um, 
I found this on a list of movies that apparently other people have reviewed this movie. Uh huh. And it's well known for funny reviews of this terrible movie. Oh, okay. That's why I said maybe we should do this one. Okay. Uh, so take it away. All right. So a talking cat. This week we had two movies to watch. One starring well-known comedic actors who took their craft seriously with a well-written script and quality jokes leading to funny moments on screen. Then there was a talking cat. This movie reinforces my belief that Amazon Prime movies bolsters up their streaming video stock by accepting student films. In this horrible film, we have a mixture of a lot of emotions. First, there's a socially inept teenager, midlife crisis billionaire who doesn't know what to do with his life since he sold his company, overstressed mom, severely depressed son, self-centered daughter, and a slut friend. Yep, that's a whole lot of therapy needed in just one film. Then to top it all off, we have a magical talking cat with special effects that are so bad I've seen better talking lips on a YouTube video. The film starts with a monologue from the cat, from the talking cat that sounds straight out of a self-help novel and what I can only imagine is travel guide footage from some state park. Then we go to the single dad's son lounging and being annoyed by the dad who is now freshly retired and just in the son's way. Jump a little ahead and I get really confused because a girl comes over to be tutored in English and is basically throwing herself at the boy who runs away scared at the idea of her in a bikini. This is our first glance at the slut character. Jump cut to the other household, lo and behold, with a single mother of two kids, and we see her struggling to keep those two twins from fighting. Now a bunch of stuff happens in the middle with the father and the mother meeting and hitting it off and the cat talking to everyone, but only once and only in cryptic messages, but the big deal comes towards the end. So the mother's daughter goes out of the house without permission and the son goes to find her. We learn that the real fear the other guy, young guy has is swimming, probably also boobs, but it's mostly swimming. So, brother finds this kid's house, and suddenly we have a 1960s gay porno on our hands. Things get very homoerotic very fast in the film, with one teen stripping and the other teen asking him to teach him stuff. Uh, while inside, old dad and young daughter are cooking in the kitchen and chatting over computer code. Then the mom comes in, and all hell breaks loose. The cat tries to repair the damage, but gets hit by a car, and the whole group goes on a Narnia adventure for a magical collar that looks like a seaweed took a dump. A couple of really cheesy effects later, and all is well with both the cat and the families again, and the old people are porking, the young slut and the newly w water-winged kid are playing hide the pickle in the pool, brother is laughing at everything, and sis is on the computer buried in code. I guess it works out for everyone but the viewer, because this film stunk. I mean, the acting, if you can call it that, is abysmal, and the script had to have been written by a five-year-old. If I was a professor grading this assignment, I'd give it an F and tell the student they need to practice saying, would you like fries with that? But since I'm just reviewing this garbage, all I can say is I rate it at a puke, and it's lucky to be that high. All right, Colin, go for it. Okay, so background information, because apparently uh, some of my co-hosts didn't know this yet. <laughs> so... Back in, we have talked before many times about child stars and how child stars have been known to have problems becoming adults. Well, there's actually one child star who's kind of the center of all of this child star tomfoolery. And his name is Johnny Whitaker, who is actually the father character in the movie A Talking Cat. Uh, so Johnny Whitaker, when he was eight, was in a TV show called Family Affair, where he had a twin sister played by Anissa Jones. Now, if you've never heard of Family Affair, that's because it's only known because Anissa Jones killed herself. Here, hold on one second. Okay, that's much better. So, yeah, Anissa Jones killed herself using drugs. Johnny Whitaker also was on drugs, later got off drugs, and uh, actually runs a, uh, a company that helps people get off drugs. But Johnny Whitaker also worked with Jodie Foster. So in those movies where Jodie Foster was a, was a kid star, Johnny Whitaker also worked with her. So... That's the, the main guy, the father character in A Talking Cat. That's also the most interesting thing about A Talking Cat. 
Um, Tell you did a really good job of going through the storyline, which I was going to do too, so I'm not going to re-go through the storyline again. Uh, I will point out, yes, the cat only talks in basically fortune cookie statements. And as far as I can tell, the cat talking to the humans in this movie had almost no effect on this movie at all. I mean, he told the father character, go for a walk in the woods. Yeah. Well, okay. So he walked in the woods, but he didn't actually have, the cat had nothing to do with the father getting to where he ended up going. Yeah, no, he didn't. Um, and the cat's conversations with everybody else were basically fortune cookie statements that also had nothing to do with the plot. Uh, the best thing the cat did was affect the daughter's computer to show information about the father character, so that later when, he's, when she saw him, he knew she knew who he was. Hacker cat. Hacker cat. A hacking cat. The hacking cat part of the movie was the only thing the cat did that had any effect on the movie whatsoever. But here's why this movie gets a puke. It gets a puke not because of the horrible talking cat special effect. Not because it sounds like the man voicing the cat, which I just... Eric Roberts. Where, really? Eric Roberts? Eric Roberts voiced the cat. <laughs> But it sounded like Eric Roberts was voicing the cat over a cell phone. No. It's because the cat got hit by a car. And then when they reveal the cat after getting hit by a car, is the cat matted? Is the cat meowing in a way that shows it's in pain? No. They've removed the collar from the cat and given it a piece of gauze to play with. And the cat's just laying there on a couch on a, on a bed like, Hey there, is someone going to rub my stomach? I'm ready to put my claws in you. And then they find the magic collar, put the magic collar on the cat, and everything glows, and then the result is, well, the cat's still sitting there looking exactly like it did before because, well, it was just a cat laying on the bed. I, 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 I just don't understand it. She's <laughs> just looking at it going... So, I had my nephew, Griffin, watch this movie. I was, I was planning to have him record his own review. Griffin is eight. This was a kid's movie. I thought it made sense. Griffin did not finish this movie. He tapped out. Wow. <laughs> he got maybe halfway through. I'm not even sure it was that far. And he turned to my sister and said, why am I watching this movie? <laughs> Which is a question that we also asked ourselves watching this movie. So it fails as a kid's movie. It fails as a movie. Um, it was interesting seeing Johnny Whitaker because it's, it's there's an actor I've seen many times in different you know, specials about child actors. Um, he still can't act. And neither could anybody else. That's my review. All right, Mike, your turn. All right. Uh oh, that's never good when he brings down the beans. It's funny that Conlon mentions it because the first bullet point is Did Eric Roberts record his part on a cell phone? <laughs> because right off the bat, I hate this movie. Just from the audio, okay? Our audio is better, they have the technology. What? Okay, that's not even normal in this house. A cat randomly coming in and out of the house. What, the, what kind of millionaire doesn't have a plan for retirement before the day he retires? And what the hell kind of plan is... is we all learn to cook. <laughs> no, that's not... No, that's not a plan. I love that you could see the laser pointer on the shoes when they to get the cat to look at the shoes, right? You, you see all of these cues of making this cat act. I'm going to take it back. Eric Roberts recorded this on his webcam. Someone had him do a read through via Skype and just recorded him and then paid him afterwards. 
Side note, if you look at the FAQs on this, Eric Roberts actually recorded his all of his lines in one read through in the producer's or the director's office in 30 minutes. Oh Jesus. <laughs> you... Hooker. <laughs> I'm gonna swim in your pool and play on your testosterone while you do all the work and uncle at my little boobies, okay? Why? Why don't these people get a screen door to keep the cat out or or keep the cat in? You're a millionaire. Screen door. And cats don't get milk. No. <laughs> All right. Cats don't get milk. That is how you get runny cat shit. <laughs> All over the house, you fucking tool. <laughs> do some research. If you're gonna have a movie about a cat, do some research about cats, please. The animation of this cat's mouth while he's speaking is horrible. And by horrible, I mean I've seen better animation on episodes of Ape Man and the Cylon. <laughs> and it's not even in sync. This movie is not just a B-movie, okay? It's a B-movie remake of a bad after-school special about a student film. So we're about four rungs down. <laughs> the, okay, so the mom... <laughs> the mom takes the cheese puffs out of the oven. No oven mitts on her hands. Okay? I noticed that, too. And she hands the cheese puff tray to the dad, who immediately screams how hot it is and drops the cheese puffs all over, thus creating chaos. Huh? Well, she has callus, Mike. <laughs> sure. And I love how the cat treats are visible in just about every shot with the cat. Is there anyone there where they went and got the, the uh, collar? Oh, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. That's all right. So, let me get this straight. The teenage girl wrote the code for the Amazon camera thingy <laughs> that yeah. we reviewed on the last show. Yeah. What in the hell kind of bandage job is that? <laughs> <laughs> and all I'm going to say right now is as bad as this movie is, this cat better not die, you son of a bitch. <laughs> How many times are you going to do a cutscene showing this beach that none of the characters ever go on or ever seen on? What, why? And again, with the milk. With tuna and tuna milk. Oh. This movie, I asked earlier what this movie gets a. <laughs> Which, for those of you who don't have cats, that's the sound of a hairball. <laughs> that's worse than a puke. Because it's nasty, it's slimy, it's squishy, it doesn't even make it into a toilet when it happens, and nine times out of ten, it winds up in your shoe, and you don't find it till you put your shoe on the next morning. Okay. I have to read the, this review. I was looking at reviews on IMDb. And some of them are like 10 stars, and some of them are 1 stars. And here is a, like, 8-star review from the director of such homoerotic thrillers as Leather Jacket Love Story, Beastly Boys, and Body Blow comes the thrilling erotic adventures of a young, confused, transsexual teen and his lovable yet inept schizophrenic father. <laughs> <laughs> the, the director of this film got his start when he was hired by Roger Corman <laughs> um, uh, oh evidently we're not the only one doing this this guy Zeno Master says I recently watched this film for my podcast we were sl sl solely reviewing awful movies I painstakingly sat through it twice with a stopwatch and timed all of the runtime of the movie spent on establishing shots. 
<laughs> there are 57 of them. Credits and shots of the cat lying or wait, waddling around. <laughs> this sums up the movie better than anything. Between the credits, establishing shots, and shots of the cat, those take up 30% of the 83-minute runtime. I have never seen a movie that so blatantly pads its runtime with scenery. And what's scary, scarier than that is that there are literally dozens of instances that I didn't time with the stopwatch where the human characters are shown doing nothing but sitting and looking at things for several minutes at a time or walking upstairs or standing and looking at random objects. It is pathetic how poorly edited and shot this movie is. Literally nothing happens in this movie. If you don't believe me, go see it. You'll go cross-eyed before you find, ever find anything resembling a plot. If this thing was completely made just from a sheer editing standpoint, it would be four minutes long, if that. Yes. <laughs> um, now, there's, there's a couple stuff. There's... Oh, my God. This review may contain spoilers. <laughs> Whoa, what? <laughs> So there, there is some stuff I didn't say, Mike, because I because I knew you liked hitting stuff like that. So I didn't want to cover all of it. But so yes, the cat is completely untrained. In fact, I don't know if you saw this. Um, when the mother character is trying to find her shoes, and the the shoes are on the the front porch, and that's the first time they see Duffy because Duffy is looking at the shoes. Mm -hmm. You can see why the cat is looking at the shoes. Yeah, the laser pointer. The laser pointer. I just, I just look at it going, couldn't you have edited that? I mean, the, the same machine you're using to make the mouth move, it, it could have taken that laser pointer out so that the audience didn't see it. I mean, when it first or, happened, I was like... Or here's an idea. Don't have her looking for patent leather shoes that are going to shine, that are shiny and will show the laser pointer. That <laughs> works too. Um, uh, here, here's one. Here's a review by Kristen Morgan. It says, wasn't sure whether to give it one star out of ten or ten stars for the film's pure lack of any sort of, of any sort of slot to fit it into. For one thing, the soft porn style sets are not your imagination. The director, David Dakota, not only makes gay porn, he also directs children's films. <laughs> And uses the same sets. Makes me uncomfortable knowing children's films are also done with the same guy under an alias company, 1313. That's this why not... That's why the pool scene was so good. That was the most well-acted part of the whole movie. He's used to directing that style. Oh, God. So, okay, so, so the one character, that, and that's why, because... One thing I was going to point out, but I decided not to. And now I understand why. I was like, why is this character having trouble with swimming in a pool in his own house? Why didn't he have some other insecurity that, you know, could be real? Like, the fact that the the girl that he's being paired with is 5'9", and he isn't 5' anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the titles on these. All right, I'll just give you the titles on these reviews. Oh, these this are, yeah, this there's a, there's a plethora. This movie can cure cancer and heal the crippled. <laughs> this movie has changed my life. A tale of two families and a cat. Hilarious garbage and sinister manipulation. Please end my suffering. Complete trash. Burn the movie and never see it again. <laughs> it was made three years ago with current technology. I fell asleep. <laughs> This movie is a miracle. What? <laughs> Makes the I... room look like Citizen Kane. An incredible story. Cat wages war against El Diablo. <laughs> Need more cheese puffs. <laughs> Pretty woman had Julia Roberts, but a talking cat had Eric Roberts. <laughs> Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Okay. So... This movie had an estimated million dollar budget. I know. I read that somewhere. I'm like, where? <laughs> what renting the house? That had to have been where it was all spent. I, I will say the house was well decorated with, because it was supposed to be awfully decorated, and it was. Um, all okay. So this is this is the trivia from IMDb about this. Yes, the movie takes place in two major locations, but includes a total of fifty nine establishing shots. Yep. Okay. 
director David Dakota revealed on the B-Movies podcast that Eric Roberts' entire part was recorded in the actor's own living room in just 15 minutes. I'm so, I, so I apologize. Eric Roberts probably got $100,000 for 15 minutes worth of talking. Yeah. The odd furniture seen in the household is actually furniture that cast and crew donated to save budget. And when Phil goes out for a run, he wears a shirt that says, Un pinche dia a la vez, which translates to one damn day at a time. I was wondering what the shirt said, to tell you the truth. So those, those are the four trivia items. I They're have... unique. Therefore, it passed that test. Yes. I have more trivia. Uh-huh. So this movie came out 18th of fe February, 2013. Later that year, on the 1st of September, 2013, the sequel came out, A Talking Pony. Now, here's what changed in A Talking Pony. So, the mother character, played by Christine DeBell, that woman, that actor, she's in this one. Yeah. Johnny Whitaker plays the voice of the talking pony. Uh, here's the plot. Uh, since her father died, 16-year-old Juliet, her stepmother, and two stepbrothers struggle financially to keep their ranch. But Juliet thinks she has a secret that can keep the ranch open. Her hat horse, Horatio, can talk. Why the horse got to be named Horatio? Apparently, this was also known as a ponytail. Um, and in Germany, it was known as Das... Yelmnis Dust Ponies. It also had a million dollar estimated budget. <laughs> I think it was the same million dollar estimated budget. Um, that references Mr. Ed. That's good because they're ripping it off. Uh, thank goodness we're not going to watch that one. No, we are not watching a talking pony. All right, so there's your movie review for this week uh, or for this episode. Two movies not to watch unless you're Shaggy. Yeah, well, one movie not to watch unless you're me. The other one, stay clear of, according to all three of us. And There's... everybody else. There is a, if you like reviews of bad movies, look for reviews of a talking cat. Yeah. Because it is famous for having bad reviews. It's full of them. The AV Club has it. All right, folks, you've been watching PTR Radio here on the Fabulous Intro Web. Don't forget... You can always get a hold of the show, ptrradio.com is our website. It has all of our contact information on it. Uh, please tell your friends, tell your neighbors, uh, tell your pastors, whatever you'd like. Um, we're at 149 followers if you count all the foreign people that created accounts just to follow people on Facebook. Uh, so, you know, we would love to hit the 150 mark. Uh, you know, we'd love to be, uh, be on that. So please help us out there. Also, we do have Instagram now. So PTR Radio on Instagram and Twitter, as always, PTR Radio. Um, we will be back in uh, a little bit less than two weeks. So we'll be back on the 12th. Um, that'll, be, that'll be our regular show. And, uh, you know, if you have any suggestions for comments, make sure. Post them on any of our social media channels. We'll be more than happy to include them. Um, you know, so with that, I think that's pretty much it for the night. Yeah. So anyway, I'm Shaggy. I'm Colin. I'm like the eight man. Stick a fork in the folks. We are done later. <laughs>